Raider Nation, what's going on? You guys are watching the Raiders Report. Mitchell Renz from Chat Sports. The topic of today's show is trying to figure out whether or not Derek Carr is going to be the future quarterback of the Las Vegas Raiders in 2022 and potentially the future. Now, I understand it was a... A little bit of a rough ending there up against the Cincinnati Bengals. But you know what? I am very proud of this football team. And the only way that you're going to get better is to continue to build into the offseason. I can guarantee you this. It is going to be one hell of an offseason. And I don't want you guys to miss anything. So all you got to do is hit that subscribe button. Turn on those notifications because if there's breaking news, if the Raiders sign somebody in free agency, a lot of draft videos, we're going to be breaking it all down. And as soon as we find word on what the future is with Derek Carr, I will be going live on this channel. So make sure you go ahead and hit that big red button that says subscribe. All right, let's get into today's show now. You got Derek Carr, who was drafted by the Raiders in 2014 in the second round. His career record, the regular season, is 57 and 70. Now, the whole thing against DC has always been, oh, he's never played in a playoff game. Well, now he had an opportunity. He's technically now 0-1 in the playoffs after his loss to the Bengals. Though, early, probably about a week ago, I said, really, when you look at just the final month of the season, all those were playoff games in my, in, in my personal opinion. Now, when you think about it, the, here's the issue with Raider Nation, right? you got a lot of fans that are split on D.C. because there's times where he's looked very good. There's times where he hasn't looked good. I will sit here and say, statistically speaking, Derek Carr is the greatest quarterback all time that has ever worn a Raiders jersey. It doesn't make him the greatest of all time. Games played, second most. Wins, 57. That's the most. Also most losses. Passing yards, the most. Passing touchdowns, the most. Game-winning drives, the most with 30. Derek has done a lot, a lot of great things, and I will always be a big-time D.C. fan. Though, when you talk about Carr, he's got kind of two different types of careers, in my opinion. You got his first three years in the league, which was before his contract in 2015, 2016. I think everyone watching the show right now would be like, this is when everyone thought that he was going to be the face of the franchise for just multiple, multiple years, lead multiple playoff wins. And unfortunately, that was unable to happen. Then... He signs his big-time contract. John Gruden ends up getting hired. And realistically, after the season that he had in 2020, I was like, all right, this football team is going to go ahead and trend in the right direction. Now, he played well at times, especially beginning of the year. And don't worry, I'll be showing you guys those stats coming up here in a little bit. But in 2021, a 68.4% completion percentage. 4,804 yards. He broke Rich Gannon's single-season record for most passing yards in a season. I get it. He had an extra game, but it's still impressive. 23 touchdowns, 14 interceptions but then when you look at the QBR right I think QBR is a pretty good way to determine how good a quarterback is actually playing and there's a lot of times people are like oh Derek Carr no doubt top 10 quarterback for me he sits somewhere in that 11 to 15 range and I'm not saying QBR is how you should 100% look at it no but I will say this when you're trying to figure out what you should do with a quarterback you want to go in the right direction. Unfortunately, over the past few seasons, Derek has trended in the wrong direction in terms of QBR. Now, I know we're going to get a lot of people watching this video, and I'm going to make this the pinned comment on today's show. Should the Raiders bring back Derek Carr? I want you to scroll down in the comment section, type Y for yes, type N for no. You're going to get hit with the YouTube ad breaks. You might as well scroll on down and let me know. Here's the thing, man. I can go either way, and that's what I'm going to try to prove to you here on today's show. I'm okay with the Raiders keeping D.C. I'm okay with the Raiders keeping Basachi and keeping the group together and then try to build going forward. I'm also okay with the idea of you moving on from Derek Carr and going out and getting somebody else, and here's why. The Raiders, Derek Carr has proven to me, when you put a lot of talent around him, he can be successful and he can win football games. Poise, or perfect point is this. The first seven games this year, Raiders are 5-2, and two, Derek 67.6% completion percentage, 2,269 yards, 12 touchdowns, 5 turnovers. When you look at that at a 17-game pace, that's 5,510 yards, 29 touchdowns, 12 interceptions. Everybody would agree. If you're winning five to two games right for the whole season, that's a very good record overall. And on top of that, you're throwing for 5,000 yards, 29 touchdowns. It's a very impressive year for Derek Carr. Now, I'm going to show you his last seven game stats. But first, I do got to give some love to today's sponsor, BetUS. Believe it or not, if it's not for BetUS, if it's not for any of our sponsors we have here, I can't do free videos. If you want to bet on the rest of the NFL playoffs, all you got to do is go to chatsports.com slash radio. If you want to bet on the Monday night football game tonight in the playoffs, you can do that. If you want to bet on Super Bowl, 
Who's going to be the next Raiders head coach? You can do it. Where? Chatsports.com slash Raiders. Make sure you use promo code Raiders125. That way you're going to get 125% deposit bonus. Now let's talk about DC over the final half of the season. And this is also why I'm okay moving on from him because when you talk about Carr, it's always been, oh, he plays well. He plays well in the beginning. He struggles near the end of the season. The Raiders have their collapse. Well, this was a little bit different because the Raiders won games at the end of the season. and But personally, Derek himself did not play very well. Now the last seven games I am including the playoff game up against the Bengals where Derek threw for 1,700 yards. He had seven touchdowns, ten interceptions. Now look, or ten, ten turnovers, excuse me. When you think about that from an entire season, now be honest with me guys, if Derek were to finish a season like this, 17 touchdowns, 24 turnovers, how would you feel? But then there's the other side of it. The first seven games, you had Henry Ruggs, and he had a healthy Darren Waller. You had all your options. Derek Carr was really, really good. Then you lose Henry Ruggs. You lose Darren Waller for about a five-game stretch, and then he's not so good. So do you have confidence in the Raiders being able to put a solid team around D.C.? Because if you don't, well, then I don't know if you should go ahead and keep Carr for next season. So here's the thing. If you decide to keep Derek Carr, he needs a wide receiver one. I don't know if that's going to be Devontae Adams. In fact, if you're going to keep Derek Carr, you better do everything you can in your humanly power to try to get Adams over here to the silver and black. But I can also understand if you decide to keep DC, and let's just say, I know this might be a lot to ask, but you have an offseason and a regular season without so much chaos, what exactly does that look like? So here's going to be one of my arguments for all the people out there that are like, you know what, I want to bring Derek Carr back. The only way that I'm going to sit here and say that you bring Derek Carr back is if you let him play on his one-year deal, which is set at $19.9 million. I'm telling you all right now, the Raiders should not extend D.C. It does not make sense from a football standpoint. It does not make sense whatsoever. But if you're going to keep Derek Carr, then you're keeping Rich Passaccia as well because every single argument out there that says, hey, D.C. should come back, it's the exact same argument for Passaccia. I said it yesterday on uh, the Raiders Support Show where both Carr and Passaccia deserve to come back. That doesn't mean it's the perfect right thing to do for the silver and black. Now, I found this thing here from Vic Tafer, who basically said the quarterback has one year left on his contract and would surely need an extension this offseason. I've seen Tafer talk about extensions for Derek Carr, and he's basically saying this. If the Raiders decide to go ahead and bring Carr, he's going to want a contract extension. Tafer has also noted before that he believes the contract extension for Derek Carr would look like five years, $180 million, so $30 million per year. The reason why I would not do this is because I don't want to do that with my quarterback because then you're going to kind of handcuff yourself. The thing that makes DC so good for the Raiders going into next season is how flexible his deal is and how much of a value Derek Carr at $19.9 million truly is. So knowing these numbers down below, five years, $180 million, let's just say it's maybe three years. I think the more important number is this. If Derek Carr gets extended, it's going to be over $30 million. So type E for extend, type D for don't extend. Should the Raiders extend Derek Carr? Now, obviously, I'm going to say that they shouldn't. But that doesn't mean that I don't like D.C. It doesn't mean that I don't respect Derek Carr. I just simply believe is this. If you're going to pay D.C. more money, that means then guess what? You can't build around him. And if Derek Carr, where he's literally said he would rather play for the Raiders or he'd rather retire than play for anyone else, I actually think it would be kind of a selfish move for Derek to ask for an extension. And the only reason why I say that is, again, that means that he's going to have to get himself more money. If Derek truly wants to win and all he cares about is winning, winning and he's not worried about what his future of his contract is you play on the 19.9 million dollar deal that you were given you were once the highest paid quarterback in the league I get it you want to have con or you want to have I'll say uh, what's the right word? job security shout out to Sam but if you don't if you are not job secure or you don't believe that you have enough money on 19.9 that's more of a y'all problem than anything else you can build a better team if you don't extend Derek Carr and you can keep him on that 19.9 now let's just say the other side of the argument again is this it's time to move on. The only way that you're moving on from Derek Carr is if the new head coach who you decide to bring in, let's say it's Jim Harbaugh, Brian Dable, I don't know, a lot of other candidates, got plenty of videos around it. Then it's time to go out and find somebody else. Or, and this is when I say this, I get you could potentially go out and get somebody in free agency, but you have to trade Derek Carr. Because if you trade DC right now, his timetable to be traded, it is at the absolute highest as it is right now. And that's because of Carr's contract. For NFL teams out there, you have a $0 million dead cap hit at 19.9. If you're an NFL team that thinks that you can win now, 
you're going to be willing to trade a lot more draft capital because of Derek Carr's contract. Now, you could potentially go out and get then a rookie quarterback, which then could help build around. The other option, obviously, is this. You keep Derek Carr in that final year, 19.9, go ahead and draft a quarterback, and then have that young quarterback learn behind D.C., which, to be honest, is an idea that I'm also very, very open to. Now, when we talk about Carr, there's a lot of people out there that are like, oh, he's got 30 you know, game-winning drives, which you're 100% right. Derek also this season has nine turnovers in the fourth quarter and in overtime. That was the most in the National Football League. I'm not saying that Carr wasn't clutch at times, but I'm also saying this. D.C. also struggled, and the biggest issue, and I wish Raider fans would stop just being like Raider homers or just, you know, or like car stands or this and that. It reminds me a lot of Republican and Democrats. I wish people would be a little bit more down the middle and criticize Carr when he plays well or plays bad and, you know, basically slaps him on the ass when he plays well. That's all I am trying to do in this video. So simply put, Derek did not play very well in the fourth quarter in overtime multiple times this year. He also did, though, play very well. But nine, nine turnovers? Guys, come on. It's not very good. So here's the last thing, right? If you replace Carr, who should the Raiders quarterback be? Because I can't sit up here and say, oh, the Raiders should move on from D.C. if there's not somebody out there that you have your eye on. If the Raiders are like, I don't know, then you keep Derek Carr. Because the only way you move on from D.C., is if you can get an upgrade. Now, in terms of some upgrades out there, Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson has already been put out there for a trade candidate. Deshaun Watson, I believe, would also be an up upgrade. Now, you could also look into some potential guys in the draft, but there's only two dudes in the draft who I would say, you know what? They're ready to start right away. That's Matt Corral, who you see on this thumbnail. By the way, if you want to check out a Derek Carr replacement video, it's also on the channel. Here's what the video looks like. YouTube.com slash Raiders Report. I break down free agency, draft, reasons why you should trade them. I mean, there, this is a 20-minute video of a lot, a lot of content. If you're somebody sitting there, okay, who could the Raiders potentially go to? Now, in terms of, like, the going out and getting other guys in the draft, there's some guys who I'd like to learn behind DC. But one of the things that I talk about in this video is potentially trading Derek Carr. Now, I'm saying this. Even if you decide to move on from Carr, if you don't get two first-round picks, I don't know if it's then worth it. If somebody's like, ah, I don't know if I'm going to give you two first. Everything that DC did for this squad, everything that he's been through throughout his entire career, he's a damn good quarterback. And if you look at Carson Wentz's contract or deal, if you look at Matthew Stafford's deal, if Matthew Stafford's going for two first-round picks, as far as I'm concerned, Derek Carr should go for two first-round picks as well. Now, if you're wondering who are some top teams out there that could trade for D.C., here's right now my top five list. I have the Cleveland Browns. I believe that they're going to move on from Baker Mayfield. They have a very talented team. They'd also be able to say, hey, D.C., we got an offensive line ready to go. The New York Giants, they've been linked to some quarterbacks. The Pittsburgh Steelers, they're not going to have Big Ben. Jack Del Rio in Washington. I think Washington is a very, very viable option to go out and trade for D.C. And then the final team is the Green Bay Packers. If Aaron Rodgers decides to leave, and if I'm Derek Carr, I would like to go ahead and try to play with my old roomie and Devontae Adams. So those right there are my top five car destinations if he is traded. Now, this is going to be the end of the video. I appreciate everyone who was watching. You can always hit me up on IG or on Twitter at Mitchell Rents. 365, but I also want you to do this. I posted on my Instagram story a Tim Brown signed helmet giveaway. If you don't have the details on it, if you want to know how to get yourself a free signed Tim Brown authentic NFL helmet, all you got to do, check out my IG at Mitchell Renz 365.